sunglasses, save the answer here. And now I can <laughs> proudly say that I am the biggest One Piece uh, doll correct collector in Finland. And I mean like a, I started with this Nami doll. Uh, <laughs> look where I am now. <laughs> uh, like I, I really mean that uh, yeah, there are like doll collectors that actually are like bigger ones in, than me probably in Finland too but uh, yeah like they have really spent money on the dolls but yeah I think I got the like the biggest dolls in Finland so this doll is here is uh, from One Piece of course but she's Nami and on my left side is Nico Robin yes both from the Straw Hat crew okay so, uh, and these dolls were uh, sold to me by uh, Rosemary Dolls firm and they were produced by uh, Elsa Babe doll manufacturer. Yeah. And let's go to the topic of One Piece. I've been wanting to talk about One Piece for some time now. It's like my favorite topic. I don't chat about <laughs> chat about it. <laughs> like never. If I something reminds me of One Piece, I start to talk about One Piece instantly. So I get to talk about One Piece and I have the dolls. <laughs> So let's get to it. So let's go where it started. So uh, the creator of One Piece is Mr. Eiichiro Oda, and I know that Mr. Eiichiro Oda is called Sensei Oda. Uh, sensei is like a, in Japanese, it's like a teacher and slash master. But um, yeah. Um, we don't have that kind of custom in Finland. Finland, uh, even if I respect Japanese traditions, I'm Christian. So um, yeah, if I don't have that kind of tradition here in Finland, I know that the Japanese people don't mind if I go with my own traditions just by calling Mr. Eiichiro-Oda, respectively, Mr. and forgetting about the sensei, uh, master teacher part, since uh, even if I like uh, seem like a total One Piece crazy fanatic uh, that I am, I'm still a Christian, so uh, Jesus Christ is my sensei, my master and my teacher. He's my god and my friend, and I'm his servant, and proud to call Jesus my friend. So, now that's out of the way, the story of Mr. H. Oda goes, uh, I, I'm, I'm not like deep diving into his stuff, uh, Mr. H. Oda stuff, but uh, let's start from the beginning, like uh, uh, and this is not in chronological order, but uh, yeah, Mr. Rachira Oda used to work uh, with uh, creator of Dragon Ball, a hugely popular and, uh, and a great anime manga, one of the greatest. Uh, like uh, the creator was called Mr. Akira Toriyama, who has recently passed away. God bless his soul. And yeah, so uh, that was a great, great anime, and it taught me a lot of things in life, and it uh, taught me a lot of things that I didn't even want to know, like. Uh, but that is a story I tell about in my uh, Occult Finland story. Yes, Dragon Ball uh, came up with the Occult stories I have. And that is the reason why I started this YouTube channel anyways. To tell about my Occult stories and then get views 
for people to like uh, get knowledge of occultism. Yeah. So I'm a Christian. I'm a former occultist. Okay. Now that's out of the way. An occultist is like person who is like in the witchcraft and in the dark arts and like new age traditions and, and l let's go to the next thing I like uh, so uh, Mr. Rachel Oda was also trading under uh, the creator of Ruro Uni Kenshin Ruro Uni means like a wandering samurai like I'm kinda like a ronin and the creator was Nobuhiro Watsuki uh, Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki Sorry, I, forno, uh, I, I forgot to put up the honorific Honorific, is no, it's Nobuhiro Watsuki-san would be a honorific But uh, I think Mr. is also uh, <laughs> a honorific But yes, so um, and I need to Briefly go uh, on the like the huge scandal about Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki. So Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki was caught with a, a mighty uh, like a collection of uh, child pornography. And to quote uh, Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki himself. Uh, I liked girls from the upper grades of elementary school to around the second year of junior high school. Okay, and so that is like from six years old to eleven years old is elementary school. So he liked from the age of uh, the upper grade. So it's like uh, uh, about ten or eleven. Uh, and then he like the the second year of junior high school and that junior high school is from 12 years old to 14 years old so uh, it's like uh from from uh, like uh, 12 years to 13 years old and okay that's history he paid the fines and now everyone is raging why Mr. H. R. Oda said that uh, he was a really nice guy that uh, like and he, like he had uh, like best time of his life uh, was like practicing under uh, Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki uh, and like I'm a Christian I don't judge I don't want to be judged myself so uh, I, I'm not defending like uh, child pornography but uh, I'm not judging so I have a different view on, on this since uh, you know when in, in the middle ages you can always say that people lived so uh, short lives in the middle ages so uh, it's like uh, the, the customs were different and people didn't understand and blah blah blah, blah but the men didn't change when our lifespans got like uh, you know longer with the medicine of today we didn't change men didn't change at all <laughs> it, if you are like a man and you think you're like so civilized now and changed yeah, to the we like the idiots of middle ages you know you're not you're just pretending <laughs> to be civilized those barbarians <laughs> no you're just like them you're just like them and don't change over time least in this like topic of sex so um let's go to the middle ages for a second so uh when like aristocracy was like uh, arranging marriages and these were not like a young couple and yeah 
married this could be a young girl or a young boy to an older woman or an older man so yep and so like uh the canon was for 12 years for girls so 12 years old was completely normal for girls to get married and 14 was for boys and if we check women's just biologically uh, under 10 like 10 year under 10 years old can get pregnant so um yep so if Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki would have lived in the like in the middle ages and he would be a popular like <laughs> there was no anime or manga in the middle ages but he would be popular storyteller he would get uh, uh, all the 12 year girls he would ever want and no one would raise even an eyebrow that would <laughs> how it just would go and if you are like angry at him he didn't hurt anyone he just watched porn I don't watch porn myself like that is uh, people having sex uh, like uh, I choose like a uh, hentai or 3D porn instead. So, uh, but uh, I'm no like uh, not uh, like how you say. I'm not sinless. I don't cast the fire stone. Let it go, people. <laughs> it happened, and he said sorry. He paid the fine. Now it should be fine. Uh -huh. Uh, let's go forever. Yes, um, but we need to remember this uh, one thing before I need to remember this one thing before I say and you might need to remember this uh, like a Rurouni Kenshin uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful anime I probably found a wonderful manga and it's a wonderful live action. It's like it's perfect it has such warmth in the anime, so uh, I just can't imagine like uh, Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki as a bad guy. Mr. Nobuhiro Watsuki even said that when he saw the first sketches of One Piece, he would he knew that uh, this would be a hit series, and he was right. Okay, now we can go forward. So um. Now we will be talking about the fourth and the final anime. Uh, this is Hokuto no Ken, Fist of the North Star, written by Buronson and illustrated by Tetsuohara. Uh, and Mr. Buronson and Mr. Tetsuohara. And so um, Mr. Eiichiro Oda used to like hide Hokuto no Ken on a uh, the Fist of the North Star, like just write the name of the anime on his mangas, so that is pretty clear indication that he really, really liked uh, Hokuto no Ken. That was like a 80s uh, uh, post-apocalyptic uh, martial arts anime extremely popular and it's extremely good it's old anime but I'll tell you just watch it that you will enjoy it it's it's fun how old it is but it's the story is it's just fantastic it's it's great the gore is great <laughs> and it's, it's, it, there isn't uh, anime like uh, Hokuto no Ken uh, and it's full of emotion. It's great. Uh, I might have said that already. I could say it even the third time. Hokuto no Ken is great. Fist of the North Star is great. Okay. But now uh, let's go to the roots of uh, One Piece again. So, uh, so Mr. 
Eichiroda is interested in Vikings. And this is due to his childhood uh, series that he used to watch in Japan. This is an animated series called Vicky the Little Viking. And I kind of like, um, let's uh, remember this one thing. Finnish people are not Vikings. We are not Vikings, we live in Scandinavia and Vikings were a huge burden for us. Like, uh, yeah. even if we were not Vikings, uh, you can find, there was this Vikings word called Ulfbert Sword. It Ulfbert was like a brand name or a smith name. I, I doubt all those words made made by one smith, but we don't know, maybe they were. Uh, but uh, I guess it was like high quality sword and definitely a viking sword. So um, only like uh, Norway has higher number of these words. Finland has second highest number of these viking words found. Nico Robin would be thrilled to hear this kind of like uh, archaeological stuff. So, uh, but uh, yes, Finland is not Viking country. We did not do, we didn't go Viking. Going Viking meant like uh, going on a raid. And we didn't raid anyone. Uh, there isn't uh, like Vikings, they are called Norse. Norse warriors would be the right way to call them who went on a viking on a raid. Okay. And so uh, Mr. Rachel Oda depicts all vikings as giants in this series. Uh, I guess out of respect and coolness factor. Yeah, my guess is that. <laughs> but uh, I feel a connection on this part on uh, Mr. Rachel Oda. I used to watch Sandukan, the Tiger of Malaysia, as I was a kid. It would tell the story of Sandukan. This is an old, old story. Uh, I don't actually remember when uh, this was written. It's a book. Uh, it tells the story of Sandukan, who is like a going to be become the next Maharaja, he's an Indian guy, uh, so from India, and the Native American, <laughs> but yes, uh, uh, like uh, his father and mother are betrayed by this foreigner called Brooke, and Brooke tries to get uh, Sandokan killed, but the guard shows pity to Sandokan and lets him flee with a boat. And Sandokan becomes a pirate because he has no other option. And his dream is to achieve the throne of uh, uh, Maharaja that rightfully belongs to him from a foreigner. So uh, this was fully like, uh, how do you say, the uh, characters were uh, made to be like animals, so Sandokan actually was a tiger and like, uh, I even went to like, uh, on one, uh, I, I liked this one character called Janets, it's almost like Jansu, <laughs> my nickname. But yes, Janets was uh, like, uh, I think he was Mexican or, or a European, I think he was an European character on Sandokan's crew. And is like uh, in the series, all the Sandokan's crew almost is like almost fully like uh, wild cats. Big cats like Sandokan is a tiger, so. Uh, I think there is one mole or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what that animal is. 
But yeah, there is this uh, Janet's character who is a dog, so uh, like he really feels like more European. He has European clothes, like a like a, he has a, a cowboy Stetson hat, <laughs> uh, and yeah. But uh, I went to a like a costume party when I was a child and. I wanted to be Janet, but uh, his character, I thought he had a, like a leather jacket, but it was like a brown shirt. But yeah, I thought that uh, my parents can't find a like, leather jacket for a kid, yeah, like a brown leather jacket, and it would cost, so I just went to, and said that I want to be a Sandokan, and I got like this fully Indian outfit, like they nailed the outfit perfectly. Uh, I was proud. They had like a turban for me, and uh, like in the turban, Sandokan had like, like a blue crystal or blue like a gem here. Crystal, but uh, yeah, my father made that from plastic, and I was really happy until like. Uh, my younger brother, who doesn't even remember going to this <laughs> costume party, he was dressed up as Zoro. We had that outfit like already, and we had like two Zoro's word. So uh, I got like like a rapier, but uh, I was like, oh no, I I need a cutlass because I'm a pirate, but. Uh, yeah, uh, then I thought that like uh, as a child, that, uh, well pirates are so free that they can use rapiers if they want. And there is one character in One Piece who uses a rapier and that uh, is Brooke. <laughs> and he like represents uh, like European swordsman, so it's kind of like uh, Sandokan's main villain has become his fr like, friend of Monkey D. Luffy in One Piece. Okay. And, um, so I've really been into pirates since childhood. And then, uh, I didn't watch anime, but then, uh, you know, the One Piece was suggested to me, and I started to watch it. I have watched the anime three times. And <laughs> I would watch it the fourth time easily. But I'll wait for the new anime. Okay, a train. I'll live next to a train yard. Now oh, let's just smile for a moment. Let's get back to like the start of the One Piece. You see Goldie Roger. And without going further into the character, but uh, I have the same birth year as Goldie Roger, and that would be New Year's Eve. And I know why Goldie Roger has it because he starts the new age, the age of pirates in the series. <laughs> and yeah, Goldie Roger, he kind of brings to my mind one. A uh, particular uh, Finnish singer who's passed away by now was extremely popular singer in his time. He was called Irvin Goodman. This is uh, our artist name, but uh, yeah, Irvin Goodman was like a, he made a, like a, his scoundrel or rogue, roguish. Uh, uh, persona, he is trading like a. Uh, well, it, it was his like a. Uh, how he was known and it was his selling point. And yeah, he was really like a, a scoundrel and a rogue. Like um, Goldie Roger was born in Logue Town, or in, if you would pronounce it. Like Japanese pronounce L as R, R, it would be Rogue Town. So, uh, and he was also executed in there. So, 
is a uh, Rotzerisa rogue. But yeah, so Irving Goodman had this one song called like a uh, uh, smells shit all of gover government power. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was he was singing in the chorus that uh, smells shit all of government power. All you can do is fine <laughs> people, like keep fines to people of the bay. Yeah, and I believe that that's all that the world government, puppet government of Satan, Finland's government can do. People run the country, but the government poses as like the authority. <laughs> I, I don't give any authority to Finnish government. Like a uh, well sit <laughs> Finnish government. Okay, let's go to the actual one piece. I got few things I uh, can say about it now. And I want to talk it further later, but um about this woman of the straw hat crew. Nami and Nico Robin. They both have skills that uh, L Luffy, the captain of the Straw Hat crew, is actually immune to. Not that these skills are like, uh, like extremely powerful. So Nami, firstly, uh, she has a weapon called Klimatakt. It's like a metal pole that uh, can produce weather effects and like uh, it gets a huge power up uh, by having a, like this uh, animated storm cloud inhabit the hole so uh, Nami actually can like uh, call this uh, it's called the it's called the, the the storm cloud is called Zeus, so Nami can call Zeus and make a huge lightning blast out of nothing. So, but uh, as Luffy has, uh, since he has eaten the devil fruit power, and let's mention Nami has not eaten any devil fruit power, so Nami won't lose her powers if uh, she is submerged in the water uh, like uh, up from the knee or if she don't get weaker if she's like a uh, sea water is thrown on her but uh, yeah still Luffy has uh, his uh, rubber qualities so lightning doesn't affect him if it would Luffy would uh, get the heart attack because the electricity would shut down his heart even Nami has like world enemies that are okay the lightning comes now you better not get a heart attack <laughs> yeah so uh, but that's uh, n not a problem for Luffy uh, rubber doesn't conduct electricity at all affects him in no way so um, yeah, and so Nami had that skill, but Nico Robin has eaten a devil fruit, a flower, flower fruit, and she can make her body parts sprout from anywhere, and they like vanish, like a, and there is like a like flower effect when they vanish. Like a, I think it's Sakura flower effect. Yes, and she can make pretty wild things with this skill. Like uh, she doesn't like to hit people, so uh, she can like make huge by like uh, doing like uh, I don't know how many but extremely many legs that like combine. She can make giant legs and just stomp 
people <laughs> and she can do a giant like a, a giant hand and slap people uh, she knows how to do open palm strike but on um, still Nico Robbins uh, like uh, deadliest skill is her uh, ability to like uh, how would you say this? it's called like, but like in MMA it's called lock fighting you are you're like locking people and uh, in a certain <laughs> ways that uh, it causes pain but, uh, but like what Nico Robin does, she uh, uh, example, she can do it on a multiple person and like uh, do this clutch move that she uh, appears to break their back. Um, but uh, yeah, and she can do it on a larger scale, on larger enemies and like a. Uh, bend them on the wrong direction and break their bones so uh, again Luffy as he has the qualities of rubber is completely immune to this uh, if he would uh, try if uh, Robin would try to like uh, break so, like uh, anything like a uh, example Luffy's arm or by bending it to the wrong direction it wouldn't affect Luffy at all as rubber would just bend even on the wrong direction so uh, again Luffy is completely immune even if Nick Robin has devil fruit like Luffy has and this skill is extremely powerful that Nick Robin has so, uh, and uh, another thing about the women of Straw Hat crew is that uh, they are in like uh, invaluable. They are vital for Luffy on the path to the King of Pirates. Uh, Luffy can't become King of the Pirates without this woman or their skills. Like, uh, of course, they are great fighters, both of them. And, like, they are great thinkers, both of them. Like, really, uh, really smart, both of them. But, uh, like, Nami's skill with the weather is not only for fighting. She's excellent navigator, like, like exceptionally good navigator. So she can uh, guide the ship through any kind of storm where it needs to go with pinpoint accuracy and with the crew safe. And in One Piece world there are these huge stone, like uh, huge stone monuments called Boneclips and Nico Robin can decipher them and as his archaeologist and there are these red road pony cliffs that lead the road to the last island where the treasure of one piece resides and that would be left there. Uh, the straw hat crew would not have any way reaching the last island without Nico Robin and Nico Robin is like uh, sh like a uh, one that worldwide by pirates and by uh, like uh, the world government alike for her skill to read the Poneglyphs there is also like 100 years of a void century where uh, the world government was formed and the government doesn't want anyone to find out what happened on that void century 
and so it's banned to read these poneglyphs. So, uh, Nico Robin is pretty much key for uh, uncovering the lore of One Piece further. And last thing the both the women have is they have a, like a, they owe a, like they have a great uh, debt uh, for Luffy since uh, they owe a great debt to towards Luffy and the Straw Hat crew because uh, Luffy and the Straw Hat crew have saved these both women from extremely bad circumstances. Nami was uh, slayed by uh, Isman Arlong and and it came to a point that her whole village was enslaved and this like the villagers couldn't take it anymore because Nami was giving her all trying to save the village by stealing and making maps with her navigational skills for this fishman Arlong and the villagers were, were going to do a kamikaze attack on Arlong but uh, Luffy came to save the day and the villagers were stopped from uh, their attack that had no hope of winning and Luffy won the day and Nico Robin uh, finally finding friends uh, from the Straw Hats was found by the secret service uh, like of assassins that uh, the world government has Cyberpol 9 CP9 and Nick Robin was going to surrender to the world government to save the Straw Hat crew. Uh, Luffy made uh, Nick Robin to say that she wanted to leave since uh, as she uh, joined the Straw Hat crew she had become so tired of running from the world government that she wanted rather wanted not to uh she would ra want that rather not to keep on running from the government uh, the, she, but uh luffy forced her out of uh like uh a collapsing like underground uh, Say yet treasure room where one poneglyph reside. So, uh, Nico Robin then uh, appeared on the ship to say to Luffy that uh, you need to take responsibility since you saved me when I didn't want to be saved. Yeah, that's about uh, One Piece uh, and about the dolls uh, and about my thoughts about One Piece, I'm gonna do a second video definitely uh, since this is my favorite topic but uh, uh, I just want to thank you for watching uh, and, and if you want to talk about One Piece throw me a comment, if you want to talk about the dolls throw me a comment if you have your own theories or your own interests, give me a shout. Uh, if you want to talk about history or like a robot train. Oh, let's just uh, leave it at that, to the train. Thank you and goodbye.